Ashna says, what role does terrorism play in geopolitics apart from suffering and misery? And Shubhankari says, what leads to the rise of militant groups? Why aren't governments able to control them? What can be done to prevent them from forming? And what can be done to seize them from existence once they are there? See, terrorism plays a significant role in geopolitics. From the 1970s and 80s onwards, there have been these terrorist outfits. I I remember in the 1980s, when I was a kid, there was this group called Abu Nidal. Abu Nidal group in Lebanon, was it? Or Libya? It was in the Middle East region. So these were groups that targeted the Americans, I think, and the Western assets. And over the years, over the decades, various powers, whether it's the USSR, whether it's the US, whether it's the Chinese, they have all leveraged these, they have all made use of various terrorist organizations to achieve certain geopolitical objectives. The Americans used Pakistan as a proxy against India, and the Pakistanis used various terrorist outfits as proxies in India. In India. So you could say overall these were, these were US proxies during the Kashmir issue in the 1990s and all, when there was so much terrorism in India, even during the 1980s Khalistan thing. And in the Northeast, the Chinese have been have been sponsoring and, and uh, supporting these various Naga terrorist outfits, uh, which is very well documented. So these are very well, very, these are definitely used, terrorist outfits are definitely used in geopolitics to wage proxy warfare against countries, to make a country bleed by a thousand cuts. That has especially been used against India. It has also been used in the Middle East to keep the entire region on, on the boil for decades. Since the 1940s and 50s, you've always had this, these conflicts in the Middle East. In recent times, you have all these Hamas and etc., all these terrorist organizations. The PLO was also a terrorist organization. Uh, at least it was considered to be so at some time, at some point in time. So it is definitely one of the uh, tools in the geopolitical toolkit. It does play a significant role. For example, the Americans used ISIS uh, in in the Middle East, in Syria and Iraq. They then used the Al-Qaeda against the ISIS when they wanted to dismantle the ISIS and so on. So it's a very murky game. It definitely has a significant role in geopolitics. Now Shubankari says, what leads to the rise of militant groups? Militant groups, terrorist groups emerge when there is an absence of power, when there is a power vacuum. Whenever there is a power vacuum in a geographical region, local warlords and local thugs and local gangsters will rise up and terrorize the people because that's that's what naturally happens. So these militant groups, terrorist groups, they rise out of power vacuums. And then you have big players like superpowers or other countries that sponsor these terrorist outfits and use them for various geopolitical uh, agendas. So that is why these uh, militant or terrorist groups rise and how they are sustained. And well, they are certainly controlled by certain governments. The ISI has been controlling a number of of, of terrorist outfits that have been targeting India. They have been controlling the Taliban. So they are certainly controllable as long as you have the right kind of leverage over them. So the Pakistanis were able to control the Taliban because they control all the funding. They control all the supplies of arms and ammunition, all the fuel, etc. So everything was controlled by the Pakistanis until now. When our government is not able to control them, they are unable to control them when they lose leverage over them. That's when these terrorist outfits run run free. They run amok. So it is certainly a a phenomenon that has existed for a very long time. Uh, What can be done to prevent them from from forming? Well, don't allow a power vacuum to form. For example, in India also, you had this uh, Maoist terror outfits in various places. So it happens when the government doesn't pay attention to a certain region. It doesn't, it neglects the, that particular region. And that's how foreign forces are able to influence the, the people in the region and create these terrorist outfits with foreign funding and all that. So it's a simple thing. If there is a, an absence of, of power, if there is an absence of, uh, if there's a vacuum of power, then these outfits naturally emerge, especially when they are controlled by foreign 
Пауърс. 